In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Can I just change that music? So today, we're going to continue. We're going to conclude this ser uh, uh, series, Proven and Branded, Tried by Fire. Today, we're going to talk about being tried by sight. Tried by sight. What is proven again? Proven means to prove by a test. I told you that when you go to school, the teacher will test us. Why do the teacher test us? Does the teacher test us to hurt us? No. The teachers test us to reveal to us, to show us where we are at. So we got to understand God allows us to go through tests to reveal to us where we are at in him. So it's not designed to kill us, but it's designed to sharpen us. So try means to be proven by a test, to be found good and faithful and trustworthy through experiences. This is where God is showing, we're proving to God that we can be loyal. We're proving to God that we're faithful. We're proving to God that we have character and we have integrity. In other words, we're going to do what we know to do right, even if we don't want to. Yes, I want to cuss you out, but I know it ain't right for me to cuss you out, so I ain't going to do it. Come on here. I want to slap you, but I ain't going to slap you because I know it ain't right. This is why God will allow us to be put in these situations because he want to know, are you going to be moved by what you see? Sight is the power of seeing. A thing that one sees or that they have, uh, or that they, they can be seen. So we got to understand that if we're going to be tried by sight, you got to understand we cannot be moved by what we see with our natural eyes. Our natural eyes uh, what we're going through with our natural eyes is uh, is preparing us for the test. And it's where God do not want us to believe what we see to say, well, God must don't love me because I'm going through this. Well, God don't care about me because this is what my situation looks like. You're being tested. You're being tried. And you got to have this at right now. I got to have a knowing that he is with me. I got to have a knowing in my mind that what I see is temporary. I got to have a knowing that when I talk to God, that God's word is going to help me to navigate and to be where God wants me to be at. I got to remember that God is not moved by my feelings. In other words, I can cry myself to a blue in the face. It's not running down my nose. I'm just crying, I'm crying. God ain't moved by feelings and emotions. God is only moved by his word and his word alone. You got to remind yourself that can we cry? Yes. Can we holler? Yes. But know that God ain't moved by that. You got to understand that the enemy, that God uses the enemy to put things in front of us to test us. So you got to be aware of seeing yourself through the enemy lenses. You got to be careful of seeing yourself in the midst of your trial. Well, you going through a trial and it look like you ain't got enough. You got to be careful of believing you ain't got enough. You got to understand you may find yourself being in a situation where you feeling like you boxed in, feeling like you blocked. You got to get yourself in a place that you ain't going to be convinced that you're stuck. It may look like you blocked, but you got to tell yourself, I'm not stuck. I want you to turn your Bibles to Numbers, the 13th chapter. This is where God is raising up a people. Who's going to be proven and branded. And they're going to be able to carry the substance of his name. Not only will you ain't got to tell nobody I'm a child of God. They're going to be able to tell about what you went through. They're going to be able to tell because they see you standing in what looked like it was impossible. They're going to see you standing in everything that was meant to kill you. And they're going to see you walking out like smoke. They're going to see where it looked like you lost everything. And they're going to watch you watch walk out with more than enough. They're going to see what the doctor shake his head and say, ain't nothing we can do for you. And people are going to see you walk through that sickness, walk through whatever that you've been going through, walk through, and you're walking in heaven. Because you did not allow the sight to tell you what you ought to become. But you understand God allowed us to go through this to test us. So when you look at Numbers 13, let's start at verse 1. I'm going to read it to you. Out of the American Standard Version. It said, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, 
Send out for yourself men so that they may spy out the land of Canaan, which I am going to give to the sons of Israel. You shall send a man from each of their father's tribe, every one a leader amongst them. So Moses sent them out from the wilderness of Haran, and he could, and the command of the Lord, all of them were men who were heads of Israel. So let me give you the backdrop. God was sending them to the promised land. And all the people, the 12 people he sent, they were leaders. I want you to remember this. He sent leaders to go out because let me remind you, by us being children of God, we can't go by what we see. We only go by what he said. So God said, I want you to give me the leadership. Send the leadership out into the land that I'm going to give you. And I want to show y'all, I want y'all to come and tell me what you see. Show me what the land look like. Because I'm sending all my leaders out to do this assignment. So let's jump from uh, verse 3. Let's jump to verse 26. When you look at verse 26, it says, They proceeded to come to Moses. And Aram, and to all the congregation of the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh. And they brought back word to them and to the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Verse uh, 27, say, I'm reading the Amplified. Then Moses, they told Moses, We came to the land to which you sent us. The word sent is an apostolic word. God sent them to do something. Surely it flows with milk and honey. This is the fruit. But the people who dwell there, listen, they are strong in the city. I need somebody to bring your side up here. They saw the sons of Anak of great stature and courage. Amalek dwelled in the land and of the south of Nain, in the Hattite, the Jezebelite, the Amorite dwell in the land country, and the Canaanite dwell by the sea and along the country. I want you to put him in front of you, and I want you to hold up his hand so he can see the congregation. Caleb quieted the people before Moses, and they said, Let us go at once and possess it, for we are well able to conquer it. But his fellow scout says, We are not able to go up against the people of Canaan. For they are stronger than we are. Verse 32. So they brought the Israelites an evil report of the land, which they had scouted out, saying, I be through. Say, the, no, the land through which we went to spy out is a land that devours. It is habitants. And, the all, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And they are giants, the son of the Amalekites, who come from the giants. And we are in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were they in their sight. We represent your sight. This is us. Josiah ain't looking at y'all, right? My Quakers, I want you to look at them. But God, my Quakers represent God. God saying you don't look at it through your eyes of your sight. You're supposed to look at it through my craziness. Now mind that your sight like that. Look, all these people bigger than me. I can't even see these jokes. You see how he looking? Cause he getting frustrated. But pick him up, my craziness. God said, but this is what you got to do. Your sight got to come up, and you got to be able to see. See now how Josiah can see from a different perspective? He ain't looking from a low perspective. He looking from a high perspective. See, we being tried because you still stuck down how Josiah you move. And God said, you got to elevate your sight. And you got to see me from a high perspective. Because you see, when he put it back down, I'll show you. When he back down, look what he doing. What are you looking at? The flow. He looking at chairs, and that's what we do. You don't know, this is these people bigger than me. I, I need some help. I'm sick. Because you looking at stuff from a low place. Now pick your side back up. Now watch what you do. Look who he grabbed for him, past. He looking at a high place. 
He looking at things from a different perspective. And God said, this is what we got to do. You got to stop looking at it low, and you got to now elevate your sight to look at it from a higher place. Because when you're looking at it from God's perspective, you're going to get God's result. But when you're looking at it from how when Josiah was down on his own level, he saw it from a baby version. So now from a baby, even though he's a baby now, but when you get caught up with God, come on here. God picked him up and put him in a higher position. And he's looking at the same thing from a different point of view. And this is what God's saying we got to do. Thank you. So the children of Israel, even though they were leaders in the report, they told God, we look like a grasshopper. I want to give you the backdrop. God just delivered them from the Red Sea, Angie. This is where they was in the wilderness for 40 years. They ain't had to go to the doctor. Didn't nobody go, don't, didn't nobody get sick. Their clothes didn't get old. Their shoes didn't wear out. God fed them matter from on high. Now God tell them, go into the land that I'm going to give you. And they told God what they saw. When they were tried by their sight, God was expecting them to tell him that the, he was expecting them to tell him what he see, not what they see. And because they failed the test, their destiny was changed. You got to understand when we don't see things from God's perspective, it changes our destiny. And I'm going to show you. Let's go to now, turn, uh, go on over to number 14. Let's look at verse 1. It says, Now all the congregation cried out with a loud report, because only Caleb and Joshua's son, Joshua said that we were able to do it. But verse 14 says, number, chapter 14, verse 1, And the congregation cried out with a loud voice, and this is what they said. They wept all night. And all the Israelites, they grumbled, underline that. They grumbled, they mumbled, deplored their situation, accusing Moses and Aaron. So they start putting their mouth on the lead. To whom the whole congregation, they said, would that we have died in Egypt, or that we have died in the wilderness. So now Angie, they said, you know what? We might as well, he don't brought us into this land, all these people are giants. We might as well go back to Egypt. How many times you complain about how hard it is? And you go back to not reading your Bible. You go back, I ain't going to say nothing. You're telling him, it's best to go back to an old place, you're going to pull you out Look at verse 2. This is what they can tell you. Verse 3. Why does the Lord bring us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will be a prey. Is it not better for us to return to Egypt? They said one to another, let us choose a captain and we're going to return back to Egypt. So in other words, they're telling God, you made a mistake by bringing us out. We don't go back because we want somebody to tell us what to do. We want somebody to slave over us because we don't want to go by what you see. We want to go by what we see. Mm -hmm. So in other words, they stop going. So I'm telling you, me too, we have been in situations and we have locked eyes with what we saw and we complain because we can't see our way through. We complain because we don't understand why God put us in this situation. Now understand that God said, I'm trying you. Mm, because you told me you was my daughter. Uh -huh. You told me, Mr. Ed, you was my son. But when I put you in a situation, you telling me what the devil see, but you don't tell me what I see. Come on. So now there's some consequences. Let's look at verse, jump down to verse 18. Because of the mother and complaining, because they told God, you brought us here, now the enemy going to eat my children. Now, then what they say, 
because y'all got to get this. Because when you go into a trial, we have cursed ourselves. I guess you know what? You know what? Just take all my money then. I feel like I'm spending all my money. The devil just got all my money. The devil got my marriage. The devil got my children. I'm sick. I don't know what I'm going to do. I feel like I'm going to lose my mind. When you said that, you made a covenant with what you said. Verse 18, Numbers 14, 18. The Lord is long suffering. He's low to anger, abundant in mercy, and loving kindness, forgiving the iniquity and transgress, transgressions, but he will by no means clear the guilty. Visit the iniquity of the visit the iniquity of the fathers upon their children and upon the third and fourth generation. Verse 19, pardon I pray you the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of your mercy and loving kindness just as you have forgiven them from Egypt until now. Now jump to verse 27. How long, this is what God is saying, how long will this evil generation morrow against me? I have heard their complaints, their murmuring against me. Tell them as I live, says the Lord, what you have said in my hearing, I will do to you. Do y'all see that? He said, your dead bodies shall fall in the wilderness, all of who were numbered of you, from 21 years old and upward, who have marveled against me. Surely none of you shall come into the land which I swore to make you dwell in, Except Caleb, son of Junithy, and Joshua, son of Nun. He said, But your little ones, whom you said will be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised and rejected. But as for you, your dead bodies shall fall in the wilderness, and your children shall be wanderers and shepherds in the wilderness for forty years, and shall suffer for your whoredoms. Your infidelity to your spouse God until your corpses are consumed in the wilderness. After the number of days in which you spy out the land for 40 days, for each day a year you shall bear and suffer for your iniquities, even for 40 years, and you shall know my displeasure, the revoking of my promise, and my estrangement. I, the Lord, have spoken. Surely will I do this even to this evil congregation who is gathered together against me in the wilderness. They shall be consumed by plagues and they shall die. And the men who Moses sent out to search of the land who returned and all the congregation murmured and complained against him by bringing a slanderous report in the land even those men who brought the evil report of the land shall die by a plague before the Lord. But Joshua, son of Noah, and Caleb, who were among the men who went to search out the land, they shall leave them. Moses told the Lord the words to all the Israelites, and they started to mourn. And they rose up early in the morning, and they went to the top of the mountain and said, Behold, we are here. We're ready to go and take the place. So let me tell you what happened. God said, because out of the 12, 10 of them said, we look like grasshoppers. 10 of them said, we can't do it. 10 of them said, even though you told them we're going to take up the land, we ain't going to be able to do it. He said, because of y'all leaders, you did not see what I saw. He said, because you complained, he said, y'all going to die. Not only are you going to die, but they had to spy out the land for 40 days. He said, for them, every day going to represent a year. So that means God had just delivered them out of the wilderness for 40 years. Because guess what they had to do? Go back into the wilderness for 40 years until they die. And he said, since you complain, you won't go, you're going to die. Your children will go into the land. And so since he told them this, get what they said, Angie. Wait a minute. We're going to go and take it over. And God said, no, too late now. So if you read the rest of the story... To say they went up there anyway and say the people begin to kill them. What am I trying to tell you? 
we've had to believe God to deliver our sight. Because your sight will make your enemies be bigger than you. We can't see ourselves as a grasshopper to our enemy. I don't care if it's a thousand of them and it's ten of us. He said we're going to whoop them, we whoop them. He said the battle of ours, the battle of ours. He said, I don't care, the doctor said A, B, C, and D. God said you're healed, you got to say I am healed. You may look at the situation, I don't see how, I don't see no way out. God said I'm going to make a way out of no way. You got to say, I'm a God said he's going to make a way out of no way. You got to say what your dad said because you're being tried by your sight. God is not the kind of God, whatever you see, he wants you to see what he says over what you see. They tell you we ain't got no room for you. God said, I got room. You got to say, God said, I got room. God said, it's room for me. You got to train yourself to speak the opposite of what you see. So the first thing what we got to do is we got to understand God uses suffering to grow us. Turn your Bibles to 1 Peter. When you look at 1 Peter verses uh, 12, 4th chapter, 12 verse, he said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to test you. Do y'all see it? He said, if you're going to be my child, you got to be tested. You got to be tried. And look what he said, and he said, as though, he said, don't think as something is strange is happening to you. You look at me and say, child, what you did? And God said, uh uh, if you're my child, you got to be tested. He said, so don't think it's strange that I'm testing you. But look at verse 13. He said, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be re re revealed, you may be glad with exceedingly joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you, for the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. So in other words, you're not supposed to say, oh, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy that I'm going through. No, you're supposed to say, you know what? If I'm being tried, God, I thank you. Why do you thank you? Thank you. Because God is trying to grow you. He's trying to promote you in an area. And if we don't understand that what we see, what we see, can I tell you, every time it's going to be bigger than you. It's not going to be anything that you can do on your own. It's going to be something that you cannot do on your own. So you got to understand that the trial is there to test you. And so when you see a trial, you got to understand God is allowing you to see this. Because he wants you to understand I'm going to grow you through this. And when you're going through this, you got to remind yourself, Angie, you know what? He brought me out before and he's going to bring me out again. You got to tell yourself, God is faithful. See, we got to begin to understand that the enemy wants you to get to a place that when you in your trial, you got to have a flashback. Wait a minute. My finances was attacked before, and he brought me out. So now what you got to tell him? God, you're faithful. You brought me out of the phone, and I know you're going to bring him out again. God, thank you. Thank you, God, for making a way out of no way. Thank you, God, right now. You said the prayers of the righteous are very much. You said if I ask for bread, you won't give me a stone, but you'll give me what I ask for. And I thank you, Father, for you giving me what I ask for. I thank you, Father, that I'm not being moved by what I see, because what I see is only for a test. Thank you, Lord. You got to tell him thank you when you don't want to tell him thank you. You got to tell him, God, I glorify you when you don't feel like telling him that. Why? Okay? This is what you got to understand. Why do I got to do this? Because God's not going to reward you if he sees that you can't go through the right way. Because so many times we want to cry and we want to ask somebody to pray for us. It's good to have somebody to pray for you, but God is trying to develop a, a, a prayer life within you. Because see, if you keep coming to me when you go through, guess who you going to always look for? Me. Now you don't make me your goal. God wants you to come to him. So if you can't get in contact with Apostle Lisa, you know that God is still faithful. 
You know that you got what's on the inside of you, and you're gonna tell yourself, can I tell you another reason when you when, when you're going without when you're going in lack, you start thanking him for what you need. So if you need some more money, God, I thank you that I got more than enough. Now my and I, my bank account is in the negative. These folk calling me to bill collectors. God, I thank you that I got more than enough. I thank you that you supply my need. What am I doing? Because he's testing me to see if I'm going to say what he wants me to say or I'm going to say what I see. Because so many times we have came into agreement with what we see. I ain't got no, I don't have enough money. I don't see how I'm going to, I don't see how I'm going to make it. It just don't make sense to me. It don't have to make sense to you. This is not, God, God want to show you what he's going to do for you. That's why you're being tried on because you got to understand, you ain't just a natural being, you're a supernatural being. In other words, your words are going to create what you need. Tell yourself, say, I'm a co-creator. I create with my words. And not one word will fall to the ground. Turn your mouth to Jeremiah 1 and 12. Apostle, you just got to say something. Okay, I'm sure. When you look at Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1 and 12. When you look at Jeremiah 1 and 12, it says here, Then the Lord said, Thou, I'm going to start at verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? So God will allow you to go into a situation that looks unfavorable. He asked Jeremiah, What do you see? I'm going to read that to you in the American Standard Version. Then the Lord said to me, I mean, verse 7, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, what do you see, Jeremiah? He said, and I see a rod of an almond tree. And the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. So when you say, I ain't got enough. So Angie, even though that word is not God's word, so if God is not performing the word, that means the devil is going to perform the word. Well, if I say I ain't got enough, it's the devil's job to make you not have enough. Because you either going to form an agreement with God or you're going to form an agreement with the devil. So when I'm tried by my sight and I'm in an ugly situation, my house is chaotic. Children acting crazy, husband acting crazy, wife acting crazy. And I go into prayer and God say, What do you see? God, I see peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. God, I see that me and my husband are one. I see that me and my husband and my children are one. Wait a minute. That ain't what your household looks like. I don't tell him what my household looks like. I tell him what the word says about my household. The devil, you don't believe that. I thank you, God, that I see peace. You keep saying it. It seems like the moment you said the words that get, God, I thank you that I see peace. God, I thank you that I see peace. The baby crying. Now all of a sudden, God, I thank you that I see peace. Now the baby stop crying. Spouse, all right, this stuff. Next thing you know, you quiet. I see peace. I see peace. They get quiet. The children don't get no argument or fussing. Now they get quiet. God just brought peace. Did He start the peace with them? No. The peace started with you. When you're being tried, God is not trying to change the people, God is trying to change you. Too many times we think that God is trying to change the people. No, no, no. God is on the inside of you. So he's trying to change you to see where you see the situation the way he see it. That's why he said, I watch us to perform the word that you speak. So when you telling him all this fussing, all this arguing, and if you don't shift into what you see, that's the reason why you still see the arguing and the fussing. Does that make sense? So the first thing that God said, the next thing that God said that we got to do, we got to repent and we got to break covenant with our eyes. Turn your vows to Jeremiah 31 and 1. I gave y'all that scripture before, God told me to bring it back again. 
When you look at Jeremiah, I mean not Jeremiah, Job. Look at Job 31 and 1. Job said, I made a covenant. Underline covenant. Covenant is agreement. He said, I made a covenant with what? Maurice, my eyes. That I should not think upon a maid. So in other words, Job married. And Job said, I made a covenant in my mind. I should not be looking at another woman. So what is the proof that God is telling you? Whatever that you look at and whatever that you believe, that's the spirit that you're going to bring to yourself. So he's saying, God, I'm making a covenant with my eyes when I see another woman. That I'm making a covenant that, you know, that I should look at another woman and lust at her. That's what he said. But we're going to look at verse 9. He said, but if my heart, with your heart and your mind, but if my heart have been deceived by a woman, if I have laid in wait with my neighbor's door, at, at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind, that word grind me, have sex with another, and let others bow down unto her. In other words, he made a covenant that if I looked at another woman, because I looked at another woman, in the spirit realm, now I'm bringing a, a, another spirit that whoever want to lay with my wife, they can. What? So you mean if I'm a married woman, Angie, and I lock eyes with this man here, my husband don't know what I lock eyes with. Now, in the spirit realm, because the enemy knows the word, the enemy knows the law. She a married woman. She ain't got no business lusting after the other man because she knows she married. So now the devil saying, okay, so now according to the spiritual law, we now can bring another woman to go sleep with her husband. So what God is trying to tell you? Because you lock eyes with chaos in your family. Because that's what you believe. That spirit got permission to do what you made a covenant with. See, this ain't gonna stop us thinking all these crazy thoughts we've been thinking. This is why we got to repent and we got to break covenant because we sit there, hey, I can't do it. So you don't made a covenant. So now God can't do it because that's what you've been thinking. He can't do. It. You said you can't do. It. If you want with somebody, say for instance, I'm with somebody who don't want nothing. So get what they do. It brings a spirit to me. I don't want that because they don't want nothing. They want to, like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend every dime my got. Now here it is, I'm connected to them. That ain't what I'm saying. But because what, what they said, the enemy got permission to come to me and bring that same spirit to me because they all made a covenant with not wanting it. You may say, I'm single. Well, if I'm in a household with me and my children and I'm just depressed, well, not only will I make a covenant because I'm the head of the household, right? Now, that spirit of depression it got permission to come with everybody else in the house. Even the little church. That's why God asks you, what do you see? You being tried by what you see. And we get in our feelings not understanding it's the job of the devil to make you get depressed, to make you feel what you feel, to make you speak negative things out of your mouth because he needs to form an agreement with you. What is a covenant of marriage? It's an agreement. And so when we get to a place when God is trying us and, and we get tired and say, I can't do this. So what did you just do? You just now gave the enemy permission not only to mess with you, but you get really just told the devil, you, you got my children, you got my dog, you got my cat, you got all of them, because I can't do this. 
That's what we do. Covenant is very important to God. You forgot you are a spiritual being. See, we just get caught on what we see because it looks like what we see, that's what's changing things. No, what you speak is what changes things. What you got in your image is what changes things. This is why we have to continue to contend for the faith. This is why we got to go back and repent to God. God, I repent for saying I ain't got enough. I repent for saying that I'm tired, I'm frustrated, I'm hopeless, I want to quit. God, forgive me. Curses and spirits that I brought on my household, that I brought in my marriage, that I brought on my children, things that I spoke on my job. I'm so frustrated, I'm so tired of this job. I hate this job. What you spoke, that's why you see what you see. Because you made a covenant with it. We have made a covenant with this stuff. And the only way that God can break it, Keisha, is when we first repent. The next thing we got to do, we got to ask God to break that spirit off of us. Break that spirit of heaviness off of us. Break that spirit of depression off of us. Break that spirit of sickness off of us. Break that spirit of anti progress. Break it off of my children. Break it off of my finances. Break it off of my household. Because that's a covenant that God said, I can't do nothing until you repent and break it. And cover everything back with the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus and ask God to restore you back. Spouses, you got to repent. Where you at can hinder the other's house. Where you at can stop the other person from seeing. Because in God's eye, you won. This is why he said you got to be what? Equally yoked. Seeing the same thing. Speaking the same thing. Because if one do a little fight, the other one up fight and the other one like this. Her on you. They up all night. You don't feel them demons on you? They ain't messing with you? Mm mm. Then now it's going to make this person upset because they doing more fighting than you. No, we're going to fight together. Because you got to understand, you got to get. Because the spirits are in the house. And they saying, because we see y'all have not made no covenant with God. So then therefore we got permission to stay here. Y'all think the devil don't know the word. Yes, he do. We the one that don't know the word. The devil know when we break the law. Just like I remember one time I made a U-turn up there by Kmo with the old Kmo with, with roses. And the police said, you're not going to do that. And he said, I'm going to give you a ticket, but I'll give you a warning. I just did it. I've been there seeing people doing that. I ain't going to see nobody get stopped from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I'm like, then I get caught with this. And he said, I'll give you a warning. I said, sir, I ain't no. So what I'm telling you is, I was about to get a ticket for something that I ain't know the law about. That's what we do. We be doing stuff and don't know we have broke the law, but say we like, oh, uh, uh I got permission to stop you from growing. You supposed to be making more money, but I'm stopping you from right here. You supposed to be having so many blessings for a long, but I can't because you have broke the law. We have been in a place, Andrew, we ain't recognized we have not recognized if you can't move y'all, that means somewhere you have broke the law. How do you know the difference when you broke the law versus God is trying to take, give you a test? When God is testing you, he's going to still provide for you. In other words, you know, the bill is $2,000 a month, you only got $1,000 a month. Because God is testing your faith, he'll let you make it from that $1,000 a month, even though the bill is $2,000 a month. When it's something that God is trying to show you where you have broke the law, the bill is $2,000 a month, you bring home $4,000 a month, and you're still short. Did you hear me? You bring home $4,000 a month. The bill is $2,000 a month. But you still show it. That means you are breaking laws, but you don't even recognize. You just say I'm hit financially, 
but you don't recognize it's something that you broke, the reason why you can't prosper. And we ought to be able to look and see what law have we broken in order to fix it where God can open up a door for breakthrough. Because see, God will test you. You say, you ain't got no money. He'll say, okay, let me get you to one another. So everybody says, we just want to go out and eat at church. He's testing Keisha. She just said, well, I ain't got no money. I ain't got nothing in my pocket. They said, we want to go out to church. I mean, we want to go out to eat. Keisha, you want to go? Well, Keisha, responsibly, no, I can't go. Why? Because she just said she ain't had nothing. And God is trying to get her that because she may get some wrong news. She may go, you know, get some stuff. But if she get caught up in the flesh, child, come on. She just failed. Because she moved by her feelings and not by what God said. What did God say? God said that you got to be a, 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 a to, um, what's the scripture? You got to be a good steward of your finances. So if she just stood up and said she ain't had nothing, and I just said I'm giving it to her, do she got to go home? Do she got to go eat with her? No. She may go to the dollar store and get a can of or something. May not be what she want. But she just said she needed something. God gave her something. So now she got to go go get something else. She may, it ain't mean that she won't now go. It just mean right now you can't go. But because we want what we want, we have failed the test. Because God said, I gave you this to see what you're going to do with it. So if Keisha do that, she don't realize she got $2,000 going to come to her. But if she can't do right by this $20, she just forfeit the $2,000 that he was going to get to. Because God said, I got to keep letting her stay here until she recognizes how to be a good steward of what she got. Is this making sense? We got to understand God will try you. Everything, you can't do everything you want to do. I can't even do everything I want to do. Remember, I, I, I see a different color weed all the time. Do I have I put on a card? Like, God said, no. Why don't you got? But flesh like, blood. Well, you put on that card. You do it and I play it like it. He said, no. Because he's trying to see me. If you can't multiply. The little that I gave you. Why would I give you a life? If Keisha said, I got an extra $20 I can save. That's all she got every week. She got an extra $20 she can save a month. It means more to God that Keisha got eight or 24 to 68. She got $80 in her savings account than she's saying I got a zero in there. Because get away. Two months passed by. She got $160 in there. Three months passed by. She got $204 in there. But it all started with $20 a week. So what, Keisha? Well, you want to go, Keisha? Well, if you ain't got no extra, extra $20 other than the $20 you got to save, you ain't got it. If you got to go into your savings, to go out to eat, you can't go. Tell me to. What is God trying to tell us? How can I multiply you when you can't say nothing? You're being moved by sight. Do you not know it's a spirit called won't that be lust? Just like how that, that, that one, ooh, L, L, cool J. Ooh, she fine and wine. Well, see, I don't, I don't lust like that. I have a spirit of lust in that clothes. <laughs> Boy, I got to have it. <laughs> that, you know, we all got our things. I be in New York and come like a doggone drug game. Don't get one. Got to get different colors. Got the hair red. Got the hair blue. Got the hair green. Get all the outfits. Get that in line. The Holy Spirit can be. Well, I just get one. 
I'm gonna put it up too bad. See somebody else with the one, the other color that I'll put back. Go back and get it. And be at the line. And I said, I need some help. God help me, Jesus. Be in the line. And I go back and put the thing back. Get in my car, Miss Marie. I believe God moved New York and County from out of Columbus Square Mile for me. I be at my car. They like them clothes like that. You won't save. That's not save. You know, my dear, I got a coupon already. Somebody just sent me a coupon. Then I got a coupon. Then I can get on four. I'll make the call. I'll get your coupon and go back into the store and get all four. And lie like I ain't did nothing. I'm going to do that the next month. That's what lust is. Because you feel like you got to have. Does this make sense? Yes. See, this is why God saying, I'm trying you by sight. So we understand what you We got to repent and we got to break cut what we see with our eyes. The next one is choices. Write this down. Your choices govern your life. I was talking to my counselor. And I was telling her, I'm realizing life is not what I thought it was as a kid. I thought that life was automatically good. So I got at this place in my life, I'm like, life is governed by the choices that I make. If I make bad choices, I'm gonna get bad results, and my life is not gonna be my life is not gonna look what I want it to look like. And this is the scripture that says it. Look at Deuteronomy 30 and verse 15. When you look at verse 15, it says here, see. I have set before you, I have set before you this day, life and good, death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commands. I mean, I got to do these his words they do. His statutes, his judgment that may, that may live and multiply. In other words, he said, I want to multiply, I got to follow these rules. If I want to grow, I got to live according to what I read. He said, and then you will multiply. And the Lord your God shall bless you in the land which you go to possess it. He said, but if your mind turn away so that you will not hear, but you shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. In other words, if your mind go away, Angie, and you say, I want to spend what he told me to say. I mean, what he told me to say, that means I have now started serving another God. Because I'm not listening to what he told me to do. So then he said right here, verse 20. Then I may love the Lord your God, and that you may obey his voice, that you may cleave unto him, for he is your life. In the length of your days, that you may dwell in the land the Lord which gave to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So if I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight, i got to make up my mind that i got to choose to live. Are uh, you saying that I can't get what I want? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying every day you can't get what you want. Like when I go to work, I'm putting myself on the budget how much I can spend on food. I can't spend no more than $10. It gets over $10, I can't get it. We going out, I can't get it. You ain't got that? I can, but I can't because this is the budget that I can spend. You see what I'm saying? Because if I want him to bless me, I can't begin to overly do what I'm supposed to be keeping. Last scripture, 2 Corinthians 4. When you look at 2 Corinthians 4, let's look at verse 16. Verse 16 says, For which cause we faint not. So I like the new, I like the American version. He says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Because he knows that while you're being tried, guess what we're going to do? We're going to get discouraged. 
I want what I want. Everybody else doing it. Everybody going and I can't do it. Everybody moving to their house. They ain't moving to my house. Everybody got their car. They ain't got my car. Everybody got their hair fixed. I can't get my hair fixed. Everybody going to get them massage. I can't go get mine done. He said, don't lose heart. But though our outer man is decaying, yet your inner man is being renewed day by day. In other words, you're building up a discipline on the inside of you because you understand I, got, I, I see where God want to take me in. I see at the end of the year God want to show me I got an extra thousand dollars that is free and clear. I don't owe no bill money. It's just there. I got a vision. I got a vision that you know what? That I'll get my credit together and at the end of the year I'm going to be able to get what I want to get. You got to have a vision. Write that down. I got a vision. I got a board in my bedroom when I do my exercise. The things that I believe in God for. And every day when I walk by, when I walk in my room, I look at my vision board. And I said, this is mine. This is what my life looks like. Y'all know we did our vision board? Y'all see it, guys, y'all? See, you got y'all, y'all looking at it? How you gonna get it, Keisha? <laughs> we don't need all that stuff. You gonna be looking at it. Cause see, when we get through it, life is trying us because life don't want you to get what you put on that board. So you gotta look at it. Every time I walk in the room, I come off the light, I look at it. Because I'm putting an image, I'm walking towards what's on here. The enemy gonna fight you because he wants you, he don't want you to believe you're gonna get it. You're being tried, you're being tested. So he said, your outer man won't win and won't, but your inner man is being strengthened. Verse 17, he said, for momentary, say, but for a moment. Light affliction is producing for us an external, an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. So while you're going through and you want what you want, say glory is being manifested on the inside of you. See, what we don't like, it produces glory. Because our flesh, I don't want it to go. But you went home. God said, I'm giving you glory. I wanted to buy that right there. God said, I'm giving you glory. I wanted to cuss them out. But God said, I'm giving you glory. My feelings hurt. I want to go. I, I really want to act a fool, but you quiet. God said, I'll give you glory. You can't let what you see because you're being tried. And you got to understand because dad is looking at you. Dad is looking at you to see what you're going to do. And when you pass that test, and you got to know, I'm going to get rewarded. I'm going to get rewarded for this. Y'all know when your parents see you and you doing stuff and you know you're doing good. You know that reward coming. You got to know your reward is coming from God when you're being tried and you're going through the right way. Because the enemy wants us to think that we're not going to do. But look at verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen. In other words, I cannot get focused. That's why I got to break covenant, break ties with what I see. He said, while we look not at the things which are seen, but what? At the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. So you being broke is temporary. You being sick is temporary. You being limited is temporary. He said, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So when you start speaking, when you start speaking that God is working it out for me, God is turning things around for me, even though it looked like things get worse, you got to begin to say, God, I thank you. Me to understand. God, I praise you. God, I magnify you. Because you understand that you're being tried. So that when you know that you're being tried, come on, y'all, let's start praying. Start talking to God. Forgive me for believing what I see. Forgive me, Lord, for mama that complaining. Lord, I ask you to remove every curse that I brought on myself. 
Every curse that I'm brought on our children. That I said that we ain't going to make it. Well, I said that we're going to lose everything. Well, I said we can't afford this. Well, I said that, Father, I don't see how you're going to work it out. God, forgive me for doubting you. Forgive me for I will not be like the children of Israel. I will not mommy and complain. If I don't have nothing good to say, I ain't going to say nothing at all. God, forgive me for thinking negative thoughts in my mind. Forgive me for trying to figure it out. You ain't told me to figure it out. You told me to believe your word. You told me to stand on your word. You told me that I got to walk by faith and not by sight. And God, I opened up my mouth. Come on, God, fill me with your word. Fill me with your word that your word come out of my belly like a, like a river of living water. Come on here, I command the river of living water to flow. Come on, I command that word to flow. Come on here, I thank you right now, God, that I eat that word. I remember that word. Come on, the word of God is being conformed within me. God, you said that you're watching to perform the word. 